was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm excited. There's something about Sundays that we can come into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a day of rest and it's a day where we can come. We can stop from everything else and just come into the presence of the Lord and say, Lord, we love you. We need time to stop to say, Lord, I love you. Now I want to ask you this question. How many of us really stop to say that to the Lord, I love you? I know we get so busy, we, get, we have our agendas, I know we have our, our races that we have to, to run all throughout the week, all throughout the month, and uh, meet our targets and our ends, you know, to feed the family and do whatever, you know, plan out, things like that. But I want to challenge each one of you to take out the time to stop. The Bible says in Psalms 46, verse 10, be still. I love that word. The contemporary version says, shut up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The Lord says, shut up and be still. Amen. Amen. And I think sometimes we need the Lord to speak to us, and he wants to tell us to stop. Amen. Stop and expand. My vision is to see 1,200 churches planted in my lifetime all over the globe. I dare to dream big. Amen. And that's the main reason why I have stepped into the United States of America, not just United States of America, but Kenya, Uganda, Argentina, Uruguay, uh, uh, in the Latin American continent, and as well as uh, in, in South Africa, and uh, many other countries that are opening up, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, and I'm praying I'll be, I'll be going to uh, Philippines in the month of November. Amen? So God is just swinging open the doors, and the Lord said, ask of me, and I will give you the nations. Amen? We want to see a generation of young people rise up who are a new breed, and you are the new breed. Amen? Say it with me. I am a new breed, because the Bible says you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah? Amen? So I just want to challenge you to think different. Think out of the box. Do something crazy that nobody else has done before. Amen? And elevate yourself to the next level. Uh, and so, in the line of that, I just wanted to share something with you and challenge each one of you all. Uh, if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to the Gospel of Luke chapter 4. The Gospel of Luke uh, chapter 4. Before any powerful ministry ever starts or before God can use you, God has to attest and prove you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said before God can use you, God has to approve you Amen. so that he can use you in the future. Amen. And we're going to look at a few verses right from verse 1 onwards. And we're going to look in the life of Jesus. And we're going to go forward. The Gospel of Luke chapter 4 reading verses 1 to 12. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. See, I'm being led by the Spirit. I'm being led by the Spirit. Now, I don't know how many of you guys out here uh, this morning are saying that I, I, I want to be, be led forth by the Spirit. Are you here with me? We all get excited. We all want to be led by the Spirit. Pastor, I've got young people coming in my church and saying, Pastor, I want to soar like an eagle. I said, sure, you need to soar. I want to be led by the Spirit. I said, get ready for the wilderness. Hallelujah. Because before you can be used, and where you can turn around and say, God, use me. I want, I want, you, I, I want you to lead me. God has to approve you. God has to, God has to test you. God has to do something in order to see whether, oh, is it worth leading this person? Are you here with me? Now, I don't mean to say that God is picky and choosy. He wants to lead certain people. He doesn't want to lead certain people. No, 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 no. The Bible says that in the New Testament, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You know what is the work of a priest? He's the man who actually leads the people. Are you here with me? So we're talking about leaders. Now the church of Jesus Christ has been called to lead. Who is the church? You. In fact, I love the spelling of the church. C-H-U-R-C-H. Are you here with me? You are a leader. God has called you divinely, appointed you, has chosen you, and has, uh, has called you. So you can turn around and say, I'm anointed, I'm appointed, and I'm running the race. Uh, not only am I just running the race, but God has called me to lead. Uh, hallelujah. Are you here with me? Amen. So you are unique. God gives you a unique, unique plan. 
We're the Joshua generation. We've been talking and you've been using all these words and things like that. You know, yeah, we're the, the Moses generation is over, but we're the Joshua generation. But you know, you've got to understand Moses. I already shared this before. Moses is good. Great. Awesome. He's a great guy to lead the people out from bondage and slavery, but lead them nowhere in the wilderness. Are you here with me? But Joshua is the type who will lead you from nowhere to somewhere. That is the promised land. Hallelujah. And you need to have a new vision. You need to have. Now, you've got to understand, was God partial or was God, he didn't do justice to Moses. After all, Moses was the one who inherited the vision. Moses was the one who actually received the great commission. And, and, and God gave him the mandate to set the people free. And yet he himself didn't make it to the promised land. Uh, what I'm trying to say is uh, there is a transference. Uh, there is a generation transference that takes place. Uh, and it does not matter whether we see it or not. But somebody saw it. Moses saw it. And he saw his people free. That's all that matters. Are you here with me? Amen. Now, none of us are complete, all right? But God will make his plans to come to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. And he wants to see you get across to the other side. And we find that Jesus is getting ready. God is preparing Jesus for a ministry that is, that is going to be powerful. The Son of God has been anointed. The Son of God has been appointed. Jesus, full of the Spirit, led, uh, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days. And at the end of them, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, uh, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place showed him uh, in, all, in all instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me. And I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand at the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, when the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Now I want to tell you, the devil will never give up. I don't want to focus my message on the devil this morning and his plans and his strategies, although there are people who continue to, I mean, they, they are so focused on like how to deal with the de demons, how to deal with the devil and understanding and studying the strategies of the devil. I don't know why we can't just strategize ourselves in the anointing and be in the presence and position ourselves under the anointing. That's all that matters. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't, don't freak out when you come in front of the devil. Are you here with me? Amen. Amen. He wants you to be filled with his presence. Amen. And so this is what is happening. Uh, let's go back a little bit. Jesus getting ready for the ministry and uh, God leads him to have an endorsement to have a, a, a credible commissioning in front of the people and, a, and an appointment in front of uh, uh, people, an endorsement and an affirmation in front of the people for something. So here is Jesus, the son of God. He gets into the river, River Jordan, where a lot of people are around. And uh, in fact, John the Baptist turns around and he says, Behold the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And Jesus is anointed, literally anointed from heaven above, endorsed in front of the people. 
affirmed in front of the people. And the voice from heaven, you know, that, you know, the heavens part, the clouds open up and there's a dove that comes down and sits on Jesus. I don't know whether on his head or shoulders, I don't know, but Jesus, you know, the, the dove came and sat upon him and there was a voice from heaven above that came and said, behold, this is my son. Behold, this is my son. In the contemporary version, behold my son, shut up and listen to him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you here with me? Yes. Amen. This is my son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Amen. And I'm sure if the church, as, as much as charismatic and Pentecostal we might get, if we were there at the river Jordan, we would start to get into a frenzy, jumping around and say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I saw the glory of the Lord. I saw the manifestation of the glory of God. And this is the way, wow, what Power. Like in India, we, you know, we, people get zapped by the power and the anointing. There are guys who are crazy for the anointing and they want like Superman and Batman experience. I don't know why. Maybe because we come from a very spiritual country. Everything has to do with spirituality and, 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 and the demons and the spirits and you know, this God and that God. And so Hinduism talks about power and flashing power and might and strength and you know they, they want all sorts of alien experiences that should happen to them are you here with me and so there are churches there are people you know when we think about God and the power of God and the anointing of God they think you need to be an alien I'm anointed I am appointed and I can float in the air six feet above the ground because the presence of the Lord has, has brought me up and I will be carried. We think we want to be like supermen and superwomen. And I'm sure if there were people around, they must have been dazzled looking at all those things. I mean, think about this. Peter, James, and John, and another incident where Jesus was transfigured. They were crazy. I mean, like, you know, wow. They were dazzled. Elijah, Moses, and Jesus in front. Oh, my goodness. Let's do something. Let's build up something out here. Even there, God's voice came. Listen. Are you here with me? My point is, are we listening? Because more than anything else, God wants to prepare us for something that is more practical. Are you here with me? God wants to prepare us for something that is more, 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 more uh, touching. That can, where God can prove himself over your life. Uh, being filled by the power of God doesn't guarantee you that you will overcome. Because I have known a lot of men and women of God who have been filled. There have been men and women of God who walked with the Lord. Great names we know. But it's the grace of God and God's dealing with you in the loneliness that will make you overcome. Amen. Are you here with me? Amen. There's one thing that helps us to overcome is when we stand the test of time and allow the Holy Spirit to deal with us. In as much as you're anointed, in as much as God's, spirits, God's Spirit and His power is with you, you are going to get hungry. Are you here with me? You will get hungry because you're human. Jesus, the Son of God, filled with the Spirit of God, was led in the wilderness and he was there 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible says at the end of it, uh, uh, and at the end of them, he was hungry. Why? Because you're human. You will go through times of hunger. In your time of your anointing, the enemy is going to try to get to you in your hunger. Got to understand that. Amen? Amen? We got to be careful in seeing how he is trying to come around us and will try to get us at the point of our hunger. Where you feel like, I want to feed myself. I want to meet this need of mine. I want, to, I want to overcome this hunger of mine. I want to conquer this pain that I'm going through. I want to conquer this agony that I'm going through. God, if you can just remove this, 
I know I have a communication with you. I know I have an understanding. I have a relationship with I'm walking with you. I can, I can sense your presence around me. But the Lord is saying that you need to be careful in, in times of your loneliness, in your hunger. How do you look at me? Are you here with me? I don't know. I'm trying to, I, I feel it in my spirit. I'm trying to communicate something to you. And I'm not, I'm not really being able to get to that point but I believe the Lord will bring it about as, as I'm speaking to you this morning amen, amen. there are times when, when you are struggling and you are walking in the presence of the Lord you're walking many times I've experienced that when I'm walking and having a walk with the Lord to get his anointing you're hungry yourself you're dying yourself you don't have this you don't have that what are you, what, what are you talking about great things big things look at this you, 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 you don't even have what it takes to go to the world. You don't even have what it takes to establish 1,200 churches. You don't even have that what, what, what you've been dreaming about. Uh, and you feel like you are hungry for certain things and you have been crying out to the Lord. And the enemy comes and flaunts and, and speaks to you and says, you can't do anything. Why don't you just give in? There are three things that I find in the scripture. One is the hunger for self. All right. The second thing that again the devil takes him is, I will give you the riches of this world. Hunger for the world. And the third, and the third thing that he takes us through, hunger for self. Amen. But Jesus, the son of God, knew the strategies of the enemy. Are you here with me? Amen. And the first one that Jesus says, it is written, man does not live on bread alone. Man does not live on bread alone. Remember, the spirit of God will lead you to the desert for you to accelerate you for a greater cause beyond yourself. Do not stop at moments where you feel that the enemy is trying to say, ah, settle down for this because this is your immediate need. And he wants to somehow or the other wave off the big, 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 big blessing that stands before you and doesn't want you to get it. Are you here with me? Are you here with me? He doesn't want you to get it. So you've got to understand. Number one, you've got to look at this. Look at verse three. And Jesus, the devil said to him, you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. He will come around you and say, transform the stone to bread. Don't waste your time and your energy, my dear friends. Don't waste your potential. Don't waste your anointing and authority on the things that will, that will give you relief for yourself. Look at the bigger cause for God to do something greater in your life. Are you here with me? Don't waste your time. All right, okay. I'm hungry. God understands it. I must do this. But Jesus was discerning. You can achieve a lot, but yet you may not be discerning. But Jesus was a man. Not only was he achievable, but he was discernible also. Many times where God has given you a big vision. When God speaks to you and he says, I want to do something big in your life, crazy big in your life. Uh, and there's something small that comes along as a smaller blessing in front of you. And immediately that requires you to give attention to it and you give into it. Why? Because you feel like, okay, it doesn't matter as long as the small thing is coming my way. Let me just take it as it is. But God was trying to test you. God was trying to probably see how will you withstand and say, no, I'm not going to give in to this. Because God has greater things in store for me. Amen. What I'm trying to say this morning, my dear friends, is don't waste your potentials. Don't waste your anointing. Don't waste your, your, your you know, the great vision that God has given to you. Don't waste all those things uh, on, on the smaller things in life. God has great things in store for you. Amen? Great things. Uh, greater anointing. Greater authority. Greater things that you can look on, look on to. Because that is what God has called you for. A higher cause. Amen? Say, I've been called for a higher cause. Hallelujah. You can settle down. I think I came last time and I talked about the five loaves and two fishes. Don't settle down. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. At least I thank you. I've got five loaves and two fishes. No. Say, no. I'm not going to eat these five loaves and two fishes. 
I'm going to go to the extreme of challenging. I'm going to throw myself and I'm going to give my five loaves and two fishes and say, God, what can you do out of this? Hallelujah. I can eat it myself and fill my belly. And that's what many Christians are trying to do. Thank you, Jesus, for the daily bread I've got. You know, many of us Christians, we live to live, we, we live for the day just living on, give us this day our daily bread. But I want to tell you, just, just don't live on those daily breads. Learn how to be a bread maker and give it out. Hallelujah. Lord, just let your prayer be, Lord, give me so much that not only do I feed myself, but I can feed many more. Hallelujah. Amen. I want much more. And I said this before also, God will do much more through you than what he will do to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will do great things. He will do great things. But it requires greater authority. It requires a greater anointing. It requires a greater potential. Look at the bigger cause for God to use you in your life. Amen. And secondly, we find that, you know, he took him up. And it says over here in verse 7, the the devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, I will give you I will give you all their authority and splendor for it has been given to me. What a liar. What a liar. I mean, he fakes. He takes credit for something that is not his. He's trying to take power and authority which actually has not been given to him. Are you here with me? All power and authority has been given to Jesus which actually belongs to the true living God. And he comes around, I mean, look at this guy. He knows he's dealing with the Son of God. And yet he comes and says, you know, I will give you all these things. And Jesus doesn't waste his time and to get into a battle with him and saying, who are you? What do you think? No, it belongs to my dad. It belongs to me. What I'm trying to say is a lot of people who are out there who would want to take credit for something that does not belong to them. The credit for something they are not supposed to be having. That's something that they don't have and yet are taking pride and taking claim. Jesus never wasted his time trying to argue things out with the devil. Are you here with me? Are you here with me? He knew his position. He knew his standing. He knew his identity. And I say this to the young people. Before you move on for your destiny in life... Know your identity, identity in Christ. Amen? Your identity in Christ will lead you to your destiny in Christ. Because that's where your future is. Hallelujah. Amen? God wants to give you a powerful future. Stay and stick with him. <coughs> Don't let anything of this world try to say, this is your destiny. If you, if you, if you do this, you're going to be successful this way. If you follow this, this is how you're going to become a millionaire. If you are going to be doing that, you're going to become this or that. Or, you, you know, you can become a billionaire. I'm a billionaire, you know that? I got bills right up to my neck. It's crazy. I mean, there are people, I, I, I don't know why, they, you, you know what I'm talking about, the multi-level marketing business? Crazy. I, I've thrown my hands up. I said, I don't want to do all this stuff. But there have been people running in my church. And I know it doesn't happen in your church. It happens in my church. I've had people running around. Pastor, I've got the answer. Now, you know what? This is a great business. If you get into this and you make like members, 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 members go down. The whole church. And they mapped it out. They planned it out. And then slowly we're going to buy a building. We're going to do this. Your children's home is going to be small. Every, within how, how long is it going to take? Six months. And the plan is beautiful. And we're sitting at the PowerPoint projection out there. It's like, wow. Five years have gone. Nothing happened. We get crazy listening to all the plans. And that's what the devil tries to do. He will get you excited. He'll get you. Now, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to run down the multi-level marketing of companies. They're great. It's a great source of income for many of the unemployed people in our country. That's great. But listen, 
If you want to see rise up and be successful, if you want to see a great destiny, trust Jesus, let the Holy Spirit lead you and discern and know that He is your security. Hallelujah. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, thus says the Lord. And Satan comes along and he says, listen Jesus, if you just bow down, I will give you the riches of this world. I will give you this and I will give you that. And I want to challenge each one of you this morning. You know, no matter what happens, no matter where you are, uh, don't waste your time buying and negotiating and calculating your strength that you can achieve to rule. Worship God and serve Him and who will give you all that you need. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. You don't need to run around left, right. You don't need to run, around to run around to this person or that person for an answer. But you can come into the presence of God. And God will teach you how it means to deal with that deceiver, the devil. And don't get calculative about it. We get so calculative. I love it. 17 years that I've been in ministry and 10 years, we just celebrated our 10 years two Sundays ago. And I've, I've, been, uh, I've, I've been there. I'm, I'm, guys, I'm talking about it. The quick fix, multi-millionaire church. I wanted to be there. I wanted to be like that, you know. So there were people who came into my church promising projects, promising plans, promising businesses, promising this. And I felt on top of the world. But then I realize it's not by might, it's not by power of men, but it's by my spirit of God that says it is possible. Hallelujah, it is possible. But you have to wait. Do not, do not waste your time. Don't waste your time trying to make your ends, your daily bread to be met. Don't waste your time trying to negotiate and calculate and waste your time trying to buy the things and hunger for the world, hunger for self, hunger for the world. And then the last thing that we find in verse 10 and 11, then the, the, verse 9, the devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here hunger for a challenge to God hunger for self hunger for the world hunger for a challenge to God don't waste your challenges before God which doesn't make sense to God are you here with me amen don't presume and don't test the word of God over useless challenges that will only destroy you deal and discern the word of God rightly amen amen there was, a, there, was a, there was a boy who was praying in his bedroom. And he was praying out loud. God, let it be London. 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 And his mom walked in. He said, son, what are you praying for? What is this London, 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 London that you're praying? He said, mom, I wrote an exam. Uh, and in the exam, the question said, what's the capital of Egypt? And I wrote London. And I'm praying that God will do a miracle that that Egypt, the capital of Egypt will be London. God do it. All things are possible through Christ Jesus. Are you here with me? There are people who are crying out, you know, who are crying out and praying for crazy things which God is not interested in. It's as simple as that. Now Satan is saying, okay, you are the son of God. I challenge you, go throw yourself. And Jesus says, why should I throw myself? You're crazy. Are you here with me? We, you know, don't ever throw things at God and try to challenge him for something that is stupid. A lot of people are trying to waste their time. I've, I'm a pastor of young people. There's lots of marriages that I need to look into for many of these young people. Are you here with me? And I can tell you crazy stories about some of the love affairs in our church. Crazy, crazy. There's somebody on the worship band out here, and somebody walks into the church. God suddenly gave him a vision. Ah, that's the girl. (laughs) Ah, that's the boy. 
And all of a sudden, you know, everything seems to be falling right from the scriptures, from the word of God, from the prophecies and everything. And it is not, it's not true. Are you here with me? People presume, people throw things. And, and then I knew of one particular guy who came to my church, a young fellow. He stopped eating. Why? Because he was so desperate to get married to this God. God told me. God prophesied to me. I'm, I'm taking God at his word. God has said, God has said, God has said. Later on, God to know the girl is already married. Are you here with me? Are you here with me? Are you here with me? So there are people like that crazy. There are people who are running around trying to throw challenges to God and they're trying to say, but I'm putting a fleece before the Lord. Don't put fleece. God will consider that like flies. Are you here with me? He doesn't, cut, he doesn't, he doesn't want you to put a fleece. He doesn't want you to put a challenge to him because he says, you don't need a challenge. I will tell you what you have to do and you do it. That's it. My power and my glory will go with you. Are you here with me? Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. When Joshua led the Israelites, he didn't stand before God and say, but God, you know, you told me to put my feet over there. Will the river open up or not? Let me check first. Let me go fast and pray first. Let me put a fleece before you. God, are you going to part this river or not? Should I go through or not? God says, just do it. As soon as the, your, your feet touch the water's edge, something will happen. Something will happen the moment you trust the Lord and you move forward. Don't get calculative and sit down and say, but if God, but if God, but if not God, I want you to give me a sign. Now listen, there are times when you wait upon the Lord for a sign. But don't stop yourself 100% all the time. Should I brush my teeth or not? Are you here with me? Should I eat or not? God told me, should I do this? We had one sister in our church who said, I mean, for six months we kept, kept on seeing her wearing just a blue sari. You know what's a sari in the Indian attire for the ladies that they wear? She would only wear blue, 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 blue. And I was getting freaked out. Why is she wearing blue? So I called her and I said, why do you wear blue? She said, the Holy Spirit told me. Oh, said, my goodness. Another sister walked up and she said, and we would go, hi, how are you doing? Don't say hi to me. We've got to say praise the Lord. <laughs> I, I saw a pastor come to me and he said, hi, how are you doing? And he said, hi, how are you doing? I felt that was not from the spirit. The spirit wants us to say, hallelujah, praise the Lord and shake the hands. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Forgive me. You know, there are people who are making up stuff and trying to throw, throw things at God and trying to receive things from God to do something that God has got. That's not for a greater cause. I don't know why. Now, you may agree with me or don't agree with me. You say, but no, 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 there are times, uh, okay, fine, I have, I'm not debating over that. I'm not arguing theological things with you. But listen, if you feel you want to wear, just wear one kind of clothes, feel free for the rest of your life to wear that. I don't care. Are you here with me? But if you come down and say, the Lord is showing that I must wear blue, and everybody in the church must wear blue, in the family faith worship center, everybody wears blue, and then the Holy Spirit comes down, and there'll be a revival. Excuse me. Are you here with me? Today I'm just speaking practical stuff that takes place in my life. I know, I know it doesn't happen in your church, it happens in my church. You know. <laughs> Well, what I'm, what I'm just trying to tell you is that don't throw, don't throw your challenges to God over crazy things that don't make sense. God is much more interested in greater things than you wearing blue or pink or purple. Are you here with me? I mean, I, tr I do believe that God is a God of, 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 you know, there are certain colors that are there that speak out a lot, you know, the white and the black. And the Bible has, has, a, has a lot of things that have to do with colors. And, but that doesn't mean that we go walking around like billboards. Are you here with me? We got to be simple. We got to be as normal as we are. And Jesus was a normal God. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
He was not a being from heaven that dropped like an alien out here and an alien out here and walked around and said, come here, Satan, I'm going to deal with you. Because he dealt with him in the hell of heavenly realms. But he lived the practical aspects. He faced the same hunger that you and I face. He faced the same challenges that you and I face. He faced the same, same pain that you and I go through. He faced the same, same needs that you and I have. He faced it all. And yet he dealt with the devil. He was discernible. Amen. Why I'm saying this is because we are, oh yes, we are born again, anointed, appointed men and women of God. And we can achieve a lot, but sometimes we are horrible in discerning the presence of the Lord. And my prayer is that you will be discerning in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hunger for, hunger for, um, hunger for self. Let it not conquer you right there because you have a great anointing over your life. Hunger for the world. Don't compromise on the things. And don't try to, don't try to bring in the things of God into the things that you want to achieve from the worldly perspective. Are you here with me? There are lots of people who are trying to plan out things for God. Are you here with me? They are trying to plan out things for God. But God doesn't need your plan. He wants to give you a plan. Are you here with me? The moment we start to feel that we are the agents, that things are happening because of me in the church. You know what I tell those believers? God bless you. Thank you very much. We can do it without you. Are you here with me? And when it gets too hot, I say, that's the door. Because God is not a respecter of any person. Are you here with me? I don't care, you may be a millionaire or a billionaire. But when it comes to God and the things of God, we got to say, Lord, God, make me discernible. Let me not run beyond the cross. Let me not run ahead of the cross. Let me not go beyond you, Lord, God. Help me to stay under you. Help me to stay under you. And all throughout, Jesus' answer was this. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. When you are hungry, you say it comes from God. Everything goes back to God. And I acknowledge the presence of God. Then the next time when there's hunger for the world, Jesus said it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. It has to go back to God. And the third one that he said was, do not put the Lord your God to test, but be discerning. Put the Lord your God. Put the Lord your, do not put the Lord your God to test. Don't challenge God. Just trust him and love him. Even if he takes you through hell. Even if he takes you, and he's not going to take you through hell. I know that, all right? But even if he were not to do anything for you, and I always say this to young people, would you follow Jesus even if he were not to die for you? Hypothetically speaking, we, I'm just saying this. But we know he died for us, amen? Amen. He set us free. But would you love God and would you love Jesus that even if he were not to die for you, would you still honor him and love him? Why? Not because he died for you, but because even if he doesn't do anything for you, he's still the king of kings and the lord of lords. He doesn't owe you anything. Are you here with me? You will still worship him, even if he were not to do a miracle for you. Will you still worship the Lord, even if he were not to do a miracle for you this coming week? And you might have had a horrifying week. This coming week might be a horrifying week. I don't know. But will you still turn around and say, Lord, I love you? And that doesn't mean that your power and your authority has lessened in me. No, I still love you because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So I want to leave this challenge with you guys. Uh, No matter what it is, let your worship go back to God. Uh, Let your worship in your hunger for things, uh, for yourself, let it go back to God and say, God, I don't care about myself whether I'm hungry or not. I will still worship you, but I'm not going to give in to what is there before me, the bread that is there before me, to suffice myself and compromise. Uh, And no matter what it is, uh, even if it's like a challenge before me, I am not going to put you to test because you are not compared by anything else, Lord. Amen? Amen? 
And I will not put you to test, Lord, no matter what. I will serve, serve and follow you and I will walk behind you no matter what it is because you are the true living God. That's what God wants from each one of us. That's what God wants that you recognize and realize the power and authority that is in Him that you can have. Amen? Without any conditions. Would you just close your eyes?